Hello YouTube, another Tesla review here. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these uh, having to do with cold weather and Tesla battery performance. Uh, I don't own one. I rented this one um, from a great guy on Turo from Minneapolis. Uh, beautiful car, Tesla Model 3. I think it's a uh, 2001 or two, somewhere around there. Uh, 2021 or 22, whole 20 years off. Um, but uh, I rented this for this trip because I've been thinking about buying one and I wanted to test it out. And uh, my trip, I live in northern Minnesota, about an hour from Canada. And I needed to get down to Iowa City, which is about um, seven and a half hours. I think that's, uh, was it somewhere around 500 miles? Some, so close there, 450, 500 miles. Um, so I drove my pickup down to Minneapolis uh, three hour drive for me to Maple Grove where I picked up this car that took me, you know, three hours uh, No problems at all. It was around 10 to 15 below when I left got to around Seven or eight below when I got to Minneapolis. There was about a 15 below wind chill somewhere around there <clears throat> um, Used about half a tank of gas. Uh, I had a Ford F-150 2001 with the power boost, so I get around 20 miles to the gallon. So not bad at all in that. Um, you know, no issues at all driving that down there. Uh, heat on, no problems. Get the car, the Tesla, and uh, it's charged up almost all the way. Um, I believe this has 298 miles of range with where the battery is at max right now. It was charged like 267, something like that. I had 101 miles uh, when I put in the destination, 101 miles to the next supercharger south of Minneapolis and Albert Lee. I figured that's not gonna be a problem at all. I don't even know why I'm stopping at that one because my destination is only 300 miles away. And why am I stopping within, you know, an hour and a half of driving already into this trip? New to, you know, Tesla's, that was kind of surprising to me. But uh, I'm, you know, so I head off. I think, well, I'm only an hour and a half away. It's only 100 miles. That's like, you know, uh, I have 200, I have 167 extra miles, right? It shouldn't have a problem at all. So I'm hauling, right? I'm doing, going fast. I'm doing like 80 on the freeway. And I got the steering wheel heater on. I got the seat warmer on. I got the, you know, the, the blowers blowing heat around the car. <clears throat> and, uh, the range is dropping like a rock. It was really surprising. Um, the temperature's dropping, it gets down to around 10 below uh, as the night goes on a little bit. I make it to Albert Lee with 31 miles worth of range left. So just let that sink in a little bit. I got less than half of the range that was suggested. I had 267. Uh, so almost exactly half, right? Uh, so uh, left 100 miles with 30 miles of range left. So not good at all. The range was just dropping like a stone. Now this, again, you're going fast down the road. And there's an interesting fact is, uh, you know, with, with cold temperatures, that, that depletes the battery. Uh, obviously, we see that the range goes down. But then you're trying to heat a vehicle. And now windshield has no effect on inanimate objects, uh, except when you're trying to heat them. And so actually trying to heat the battery, precondition it for charging, uh, heating the vehicle, all these things. When the air is rushing around the vehicle, you're actually, anything that you lose through the windows, the glass, uh, any heat that goes to heat that gets sucked off from the outside much, much faster. So wind chill is a huge factor when you're getting into low temperatures like that. Um, so just uh, on human skin standing still with the 15 mile an hour wind or so it was, like we're talking almost 20 below with the wind chill. Imagine going 80 miles an hour down the road and trying to heat something like this. So that was kind of unique and interesting to me. <clears throat> so I go to charge, right? Albert Lee, I, I stop at a place. It's this traveler center there. There's Tesla chargers all over the place. And I charge and it says 55 minutes to charge. I'm like, oh man, that's gonna be a real bummer. This is really gonna get late here. I mean, I left my house in, in north of Duluth, you know, uh, at two o'clock. I got down, got the car at five, and I still have 300 miles to go. I'm trying to get to this place 
from the beginning. Uh, I saw a seven and a half hour trip. I anticipated picking up the car, making it, you know, around 10 o'clock. That's kind of what I was shooting for, somewhere around 10 o'clock. Um, so I charge for 50 minutes, 55 minutes. I get back in the car and there was an error and it didn't charge all the way, it charged about halfway, three quarters of the way. And so I had to unplug it, plug it back in again and let it charge. So by the time it was all done, right around an hour and 45 minutes or so, uh, because it had to charge nearly completely to get to that next charging station in Waterloo, Iowa, I had to go, do slow charging at the last portion. So if you understand that the first 80% uh, will charge in, you know, probably 35 minutes, somewhere around there. But the last 20% is gonna take you a long time. So I had to charge that all the way up completely. So I'm sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So let's see, I picked up the car around five, drove an hour and a half, six, seven. So I believe it was 7.20 when I parked to, to take off. I didn't leave until right around nine o'clock from Albert Lee. Now I'm a hundred miles from Minneapolis. So that's how long this was taking. Um, I, I drive, I'm slowing down my speed some to 70 now, going towards Waterloo because I was worried about getting stuck. You know, we're 20 below wind chill outside. I can't be getting stuck. Can't run out of range. I only had 30 miles left when I get there. Now my next jaunt is a little bit further. I think it was 160 miles. So I slow things down, turn off the steering wheel heater, turn down the heat some, turn off the seat warmer, try to conserve energy as much as I can, keep it at a constant 70. And I make it there. Now I had 298 miles worth of range because I was fully charged at 100%. I made it 160 miles with again, almost 30 miles. It was 27 miles remaining. So again, it just killed the range. Just terrible, terrible range in the cold weather. Uh, charged there for 35 minutes or so. I was only an hour from my destination. So I didn't need to charge a great amount, right, to be able to get there. I think I charged for like 40 minutes or so and then headed off down there, got to my destination. I finally arrived in Iowa City uh, at 1 a.m. So just to put this in perspective, I left at two o'clock. I anticipated getting there about a seven, seven and a half hour trip with a stop in the cities. Anticipated getting there around 9.30 to 10 o'clock somewhere around there. Ended up being three to three and a half hours longer than I anticipated because of the necessary for charging. The other factor was that if I had been taking my gas truck, uh, I would have gone, skirted Minneapolis, actually gone through to Rochester and down and taken a shorter route uh, but there were no superchargers on that route where I would have been making the gap because there's one in Rochester and one in Waterloo. And the distance is too great for me to have made that with the cold weather. So it actually rerouted me down I-35 to superchargers that were closer together. And as it turned out, I was only making it there with 20 to 30 miles worth of additional range. So it actually took longer to go around where there's more superchargers. And then I had, uh, what did I say, right around two hours, two and a half to two hours and 40 minutes worth of charging time on that trip. All in all, it turned a seven, seven and a half hour trip into an 11 hour trip. Now, this was probably the worst scenario that you're ever going to run into driving long distances. I mean, it does get colder in northern Minnesota. We can get down to 30, 40 below. I'm probably not going to be taking a whole lot of long trips in that. Uh, so this is on the on the high end of, of cold weather for long periods of time that you're normally going to run into. But just to kind of put things in perspective for you that, uh, you know, it took me nearly two and a half, almost three hours worth of charging, um, a good 45 minutes to an hour longer trip to make to the superchargers. I had to travel off the highway a little bit to get to some of the superchargers, not terribly far, but a little bit. And all in all, it, and it added right around three to three and a half or three hours approximately um, to my trip. 
So that just kind of gives you a perspective of what you're running to. The Tesla is great. I mean, it drives fantastically. It uh, it drives itself with the autopilot. This does not have full self-driving, so it wouldn't navigate on that. But the automatic steering and lane keeping and uh, adaptive cruise control, all those things make for a fantastic driving experience. The frequent stopping when you're below zero, not very fun at all. Just to put things in perspective a little bit here, now it's up 10 degrees above zero and I can go through Rochester uh, because the distance between the charging stations is close, is further, right? But because it's warmer, I'm able to make that and I'm able to make that with no problem at all. So it seems like anything above 10 degrees and up, um, I'm doing 80 again now. We're not having any issues at all. I stopped in Waterloo charging for 20 minutes just so that I can go 80. Yeah, when I left my destination, I charged to 80% or so when I left Iowa City uh, because it would have taken 25 minutes to get the last little bit of 20%. I could have made it straight to Rochester that way, but I would have had to stay under 70 miles an hour to make that. I want to pick up some speed, so instead of taking the 20 extra minutes in Iowa City to charge up to 100%, I hit the road, went 80, taking 25 minutes here in Waterloo, take another 20 minutes in Rochester, and uh, use my time that way uh, because I'll be able to make up more on the road. So that was my review. This was my first time driving a Tesla on a long trip in cold weather. I figured it'd be interesting for some of you that are looking and considering one. I'm still on the fence. Um, I do have to drive in cold weather sometimes. And uh, in the Midwest, we don't have the density of the uh, superchargers that some places would. So I, I was almost ready to pull the trigger on a, on a uh, Model 3 Performance, um, but I don't know. I, I'm, I don't think I'm quite there yet. Uh, I would need some more range. I have a Tesla Cybertruck pre-ordered. Um, but you know, I, I ordered the two or the two motor, uh, one with 350 miles of range. Um, I'm, you know, a little hesitant about that maybe just because of the range loss and the fact that when I want to drive, I don't want to be stopping every couple hours. I need to get there. I need to go. And, uh, time is more valuable than money right now as far as when it uh, when it comes to the cost of uh, buying fuel versus electricity so my review check it out uh hopefully it's helpful to you guys and uh we'll see as we go on see what happens with uh me and tesla and our relationship and uh see how it goes take care bye